This is a demo of the Fathom Analytics dashboard. Fathom Analytics is a privacy-focused alternative to Google Analytics, which is uh, now illegal in some countries. As a happy user of Fathom, I'd like to show you what's available to you if you're just getting started. Now, the dashboard is divided into five sections. We've got headline stats at the top, then there are detailed stats, then there are demographics, you've got events, and finally, campaigns. So let's look at those one by one. We'll start off with the headline stats here at the top. Not surprisingly, you've got visitors and views there displayed, but you've also got average time on site, the bounce rate, and these are both toggleable. So if I click them, they now appear on the chart below. I've got event completions, but if you're just getting started, you won't have any events because you have to set them up uh, one by one. What events are, I, I like to think of them as effectively counting clicks. So each event is uh, an interaction or an engagement with your website, whether that's clicking on a link, downloading a PDF, uh, submitting a form, something like that. I've got a variety of events that I'm monitoring, so having the total here on the chart doesn't make much sense for my website, so I tend to leave that switched off. And the bounce rate and average time on site, I only switch those on if I'm going to investigate something. And over here on the left, we've got one more, which is the person on your site or people on your site. And this is updated in real time. So right now we can see one person is looking at my website and where they came from. Um, again, unless I'm investigating something, I tend to keep this hidden. The chart below is actually interactive. And at the moment, it's showing the data for yesterday. The time frame obviously can be changed to pretty much anything you want. So I like to use um, 30 days for consistent time frame. But yeah, the uh, chart is interactive, so that means you can click and drag on it, and then that will zoom in to that sort of sub time frame, which is uh, pretty handy. I'm going to go back though to the last 30 days. And let's move on down to the next section, which is detailed stats. As you can see, this is divided into two sections. We've got pages on the left, which is very obviously the pages on your website, the number of visitors and views that each one has had, but also entries, which is the number of people that landed on this page when they visited your website, so their entry point. On the right-hand side is referrers, which is basically where people came from. I'm sure you're familiar with this. And both of these sections are filterable. They become filters by using this little search feature at the bottom. For example, if I want to look at only stats for the pages in the articles section of my site, I would type in articles and anything that has articles in the URL will then be displayed and everything else hidden. And that also affects the, the headline stats and the chart at the top as well. You can stack your filters, you can combine filters. So if you go onto the right hand side, I can actually click, for example, DuckDuckGo. And that now adds that as a filter. So when I scroll to the top, it's now showing me people who arrived at my site from DuckDuckGo and who have viewed the um, pages with articles in the URL. You can also reverse the filters. So you can see the words is like and is there are sort of colored and underlined. If you click them, that reverses them. So anybody who came from my, to my site, not from DuckDuckGo, but did look at um, pages with articles in the URL are now displayed. Phew. Um, pretty useful, especially when it comes down to isolating an issue or something I find. Anyway, I'm gonna clear those and let's continue on down to demographics. Demographics, I don't look at this very often because I find it doesn't change that much over time. But as you can see, it shows the, the devices that people came on. And I was surprised to learn that I thought it would be 50-50 phone and desktop, but mobile devices are um, nearly two thirds of my traffic. The middle section is browsers. I don't really do much with this information. I try to make a website that's, that works on all browsers. And on the right hand side is different countries. Um, I find this useful because I'm currently in the process of translating pages on my site, and this helps me work out which language is going to be the most effective to translate. As you can see, these are also uh, filterable. They've all got search sections that you can add filters to. 
Uh, let's move on down then to events. As I mentioned, events will be blank for you at the start, but I highly recommend them. Uh, it's very easy to set up. You just click on the manage events thing here, and you can see I've got several there. At the bottom here, you can set up events to effectively count clicks or form submissions. Um, if you've got an affiliate site or affiliate links and they're each worth something or, you, or each um, link goes to a sales page or something, then you might want to add a monetary value to that. Um, if not, you can just select none and that will just purely count how many people have done that event, have done that interaction. When you create the event, basically it just gives you a, an event ID and then you add that with some JavaScript, which is explained in the documentation. The link is there. You add that to your site and straight away you'll be counting the number of people that um, do that event. Let's go back to the dashboard. So once you've got events set up, it's then counted here pretty straightforward, as well as a conversion rate, which I find useful. And um, as you can see, I was surprised that conversion rate for my top event here was pretty high. And this is actually uh, PDF downloads for technical guides. And so not only does this tell me that um, these PDFs get a lot of clicks, but it also makes me sort of understand more about my audience. So my audience is much more technical than I realized. That's one way where simple statistics on the dashboard can be used not just as um, vanity metrics, but also can give you insight. And then that can help you decide on strategy. Anyway, that's events. Let's move down to the last section, which is campaigns. These are also called UTMs. It's kind of like an industry standard um, name now. They are campaigns in that if you have a sale, for example, you got a shop and you got a summer sale, you can then add parameters to your web page URLs so that you can work out where people came from and whether they came because of a promotion that you're doing for a particular sale or whatever. These can be a little bit complex. So it's got a build button here. And here you can enter the page URL, that's essential, the name of the campaign, and then the campaign source. So for example, uh, if it's a social media campaign, you could either say social media or you could break it down into Twitter, links that you're gonna post on Twitter and then um, other social media sites. There are other extra bits of detail you can go into. I'm not gonna cover all of this here, but once you put the detail in, the complete URL that you should use will then be shown here automatically. So you just copy that and then paste that in your tweets or in your email newsletter or whatever. And when people come to your site, having clicked on that link, then those visits will be displayed here in the campaign section. This is very helpful because not only can you then sort of divide them up by source, but you can then divide them up by uh, campaign, for example. So let's say you've got this summer sale campaign. You might want to see everybody that came to your site because of the summer sale campaign, regardless of whether it was a newsletter or whether it was Twitter. You might want to see everyone who came to your site because of a Twitter campaign, regardless of which sale it was, winter, summer, whatever. So that's quite um, detailed there. Oops, clicked the wrong thing. That's quite detailed. If that's a bit overwhelming, then there is one uh, alternative to this, which I skipped. So we're gonna go back up the page to where it says referrers. Next to that, it's got refs. And this is a much simpler way of measuring campaigns. I've just did one uh, very briefly, but what I did here is I just added question mark ref equals test campaign to a URL and opened it once. And that makes it appear, appear here. So basically you can have a, the URL for any page on your website and at the end of it, put question mark ref, R-E-F equals, and then anything you put after that will be the name of your campaign and that will get measured here. So you don't need to fill in a form or remember a very long URL. It's really, really simple. As you can see, it only gives you the visits. It doesn't give you any more detail about source and things like that. So you've got the choice there. Very, very basic campaign setup here or a more complex one down at the bottom with the UTM campaign section. So those are the five main sections of the dashboard. Uh, I've got a couple of other little bonus things I want to show you. One is the toggle percentages thing at the bottom here. If you click this, 
you will now get all the visits, uh, for example, shown as percentages of the total of your traffic. And this is useful, for example, with pages. It, I find it a bit easier ha having percentages to see if there is one like, standout page that is much higher than the others. Uh, having said that, I quite like having it uh, just showing the raw numbers, so that's up to you. I'm going to go back up to the top and show you another couple of things. I have my website selected here, but I've actually got a couple of others just for a test. So if I click on the word here of my website, you can actually go to all sites and get the dashboard of dashboards kind of thing. And so here this shows total stats for all my sites, as well as little pretty charts of them. I'm going to go back to the main one. You may have also noticed a little green dot next to my site, and that shows that my site is online. Hooray! If it goes red, oh dear, you've got a problem. You might want to look into it pretty quickly. This is not enabled by default. You would need to go into your site settings and enable uptime monitoring. Um, I, it's included. Um, I definitely encourage you to do it. You do need to leave some kind of contact, so uh, email address, or I think they do... Um, text messaging as well. But basically, not only will it show you here whether your site is online or offline, but you'll also get an alert as soon as it goes offline, although hopefully that never happens. Uh, anyway, it's included in Fathom. I highly recommend you enable that. And one final thing, it has a dark mode. So if you go to the settings icon here and in your account, you can enable dark mode if this whole demo video has been much too bright for you. <laughs> So that's it. That's the quick demo of the Fathom Analytics dashboard. Hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.